Okay, good morning to all uh, present over here. Uh, myself, Professor Samir Joshi, and uh, we are here for the expert talk on my story, uh, motivational session by successful innovator. So we have with us uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Arpan Patel with us, who is a managing director and CEO of uh, Shelby Private Limited India. And he has done his Master of Engineering in Sensor Technology, Germany, uh, from 2013 to 15. And uh, he has done Bachelor of Engineering in EC Engineering at Ganpat University. So he is our uh, alumni and we are proud of it. And uh, he has done uh, his uh, intern as a Texas at Texas Instrument, Germany. And uh, he has also served as a product manager at uh, work electronic uh, gml ph germany from uh, 16 to 21 and he is also a research engineering manager at that particular company so now he has uh, 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 started his own company that is shelby private limited india and uh, uh, over to you Arpan sir and thank you for in, uh, accepting our invitation please Uh, I think uh, you are muted, sir. Once. Please unmute yourself. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. Please. Okay, sounds good. Perfect. Let me share my screen first. Yes, it is visible. Yeah, can you see my screen now? Yes, yes, I agree. Okay, great. So, good morning and Jai Hind to everyone. Uh, thank you very much, uh, dear professors, and uh, especially Ganpat University. You know, you allowed me to to present my topic, um, and share my story. You know what I have did so far, and uh, I have did a couple of innovative stuff, innovative product. I will explain you about this, all this stuff. Uh, Professor Summit already explained, you know, already give my introduction, what I'm doing right now and what I did a bit of past, but I will, you know, go a bit inside and explain you how I did it. And maybe uh, this will also motivate or, you know, guide some of the guys, uh, or let's say, especially the young uh, engineers. Uh, so currently I'm working, you know, as a CEO and a co-founder for Silby Design and Consultancy Private Limited. This is this is just like a recently incorporated company in India. Um, I will start, let's say, you know, it's very important to understand the failure in the life. You know, I also had the failure in my, my professional career, uh, which I will to, you know, I, I explain you about the stuff, what I did and why I get failed. So. Back in, let's say, in 2012, when I finished my bachelor degree from Ganbat University, from UIPRL College of Engineering in uh, Electronic and Communication Engineering, uh, I was one of the uh, bank pension, you know, like sitting at the back of the, the classroom and doing regular bunks and all the stuff. That was a fun part of the life. But as soon as I finished my university study, then it's a time to, you know, earn the money to go in the professional field. Uh, so. After like six months, once I finished my study, I started a company uh, which produced a pet strap production. It's it's like a plastic uh, strap which used in uh, boxing a box or you know in a cotton industry and all this stuff. Uh, we don't go in in this particular product in, in inside, but there is one particular process inside which is the extrusion process. And uh, after six months, because of a couple of reasons, I stopped the production. You know, I stopped the company. Um, but then there was a failure in, in my particular because, you know, we were not able to launch the product in the market at, at that particular stage um, because lots of many reasons. Uh, but then particular, as I say, the extrusion process was the, one of the, the main, the, um, you know, the process which was involved in the production process. And at, at the time, I spent almost like six months doing all this market research and how extrusion works and what kind of materials it can work and all this stuff. You know, I was very detailed into the process. Um, at the end, it failed, but 
at at that time i had you know back on back in my mind i learned something which is extreme process particularly one very in details you know so uh, at that time it was failure but i learned something from that at that time i didn't knew that at which stage i will use this knowledge but today if you if you ask me this extreme process uh, knowledge which was gained before like 8 9 years ago it helped me a lot uh, what i'm doing right now so that was failure but i learned a lot from there um then after you know uh, close my company over there in 2013 uh, i decided to to move to germany for my higher study um uh, but let me tell you once one thing you know there was one particular mindset i have that at some point i have to come back to india um because of many reason friends family you know uh, let's say this country have given me a lot so i have to give in something back you know so kind of stuff um so i have a particular mindset that at some point i have to come back to india uh, and do some kind of entrepreneurship or something like this here yeah uh, how and when and where i was not sure at the time um, but then i went to to germany i did my master study there um, from coburg university in sensor technology then there was also like a dual program study for master it was two year program uh, so i was also in 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 china for six months in shanghai um and then yeah i started my intensive in texas instrument it's one of the biggest company uh, for semiconductor manufacturing uh, from usa and they have very big office in in munich in germany so i was working there and then i i moved to root electronics uh, in 2016 where i was working as a product manager uh, and then last three years like in 1919 2021 i was also working as a rem manager so it's like handling all the research and uh, development activity at Wood Electronics. So Wood Electronics is a company. It's uh, the biggest, let's say, one of the biggest in Europe for electronic component manufacturing. Uh, we are talking about, you know, inductor, capacitor, power transformer, connectors, sensors, uh, wireless charging coils, um, and a lot. So you know, if you if you want interested, you can just look on the websites. Uh, and we are doing almost like you know 1.5 billion euro sales, which is equivalent to about. Uh, 13000 crore rupees something like this so it's already a big company and while working as a booth i i was lucky enough and almost traveled like 24 countries in the time in last 7 8 year uh, time frame and still counting and i had to take almost like more than 100 flights and all this stuff you know so i was like uh, my as a part of my job i was dealing with suppliers uh, oems you know we have almost like more than 400 oems so at the time and in china in taiwan japan Philippines, Malaysia, so all South Asian countries, USA, uh, Canada. So I've already been all these countries, you know, uh, meeting a customers, uh, meeting or let's say training uh, to to train my uh, let's say FAEs, application engineers or sales engineers. So I was doing all this activity basically. So let's say the product manager is like a task, uh, would design the product, who who work with the OEM, uh, who the market the product so we are we were like like center of the business yeah at the time uh, and then later on i moved to r and d department where i was working as a research engineering manager um and then before like 5 months ago i decided to move back to to india and start my own company in the similar field um it's not betraying to you know i had gained some some knowledge over there and some experience over there in the electronics so it's not betraying to with electronic but uh, right now, I'm let's say what I'm doing it's it's, it's in the partnership with the Virtual Electronics. So, um, you know, designing a cons or or uh, consulting the the process and all the stuff. I'm still working with Virtual Electronics, but as a as a not anymore as the employer or employees, but now working as a as a business partner of, uh, with them. And the, all the manufacturing process I will do here in India, it's it's only for Virtual Electronics. So I I will work as an OEM for them, kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so at Silby Electronics, uh, we design a component. So you know, especially custom design. For example, you you can imagine, let's say, uh, inductor specifically. Yeah, we need um, inductor for mobile phones, for power supplies, uh, for laptops, television, name it. Any electronic circuit, we need this kind of electronic components. And every co design ha has a specific, uh, you know, well, let's say every application has a specific design. So Normally, when you know when, when when the customers ask us, okay, we have this applications in development phase. What kind of support we can give depending on the component size, you know, all these electrical parameters, magnetic parameters, what they're expecting. So we do all these custom designs uh, for the customer. 
and once the customer is satisfied with the design, it's always like you know multiple loop, uh, uh, and then we go in the mass production phase. So uh, here in Silby Electronics, we will specifically specifically work on this molded inductive components, where we will have this you know everything in a molding construction. So this is something like what we will do in the future. You can see on my cursor point. Uh, like this, these are like inductor, power transformer, common mode chalk, uh, all together. In your, these are components. Normally, you don't see these components uh, with your naked, uh, naked eyes, you know. But uh, this is like kind of replacement. So maybe you have seen all these components on the PCB. You, you can see this is inductors. So where, where we have ferrite and then the coil around it. And then this wireless charging coil, which is normally used in every mobile phone nowadays, uh, where you can charge your phone uh, without a cord. Uh, then power transformers, you know, to transfer the energies uh, and all the stuff. Uh, and now we are going to replace this whole concept uh, with these molding components. Yeah, and we have particular patterns on all this stuff, which I will talk uh, later on. Normally, when we talk about electronic components, it's a dominant market by China. So China, they have almost like 4,000 companies which doing all this manufacturing, all this uh, manual discrete component. Um, and um, now we will do all this molding component. Uh, why we require this molding components? You know, the reason is this all discrete component need to produce by uh, hand work. So if you go in China and if you see the OEM works, I have almost traveled like say 18 times uh, to China to meet the OEMs and you know to do business deals and all this stuff. And when we see the production house, it's always like manual work. There are 10 employees with 10, 10 Chinese people sitting in a table, you know, and then doing all this stuff. One is doing winding, giving to next. Someone is doing marking and all this stuff. Uh, so there are a couple of steps. They're doing everything by hand. Yeah, mostly. Of course, there are a couple of machines involved, but it's still it's a manual work process. Uh, and then this 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 molding components or the technology what we have, the recipe we have developed or the process we have what we have developed, it's totally automation. So we don't need really uh, the human to to do the stuff, but to control the machine. So there are a couple of machines, almost like eleven step process where um, the operators or the engineers, they will, will control the process and then we will have very good uh, control on the, the quality because it's an automation line and we can increase the capacity, we can decrease the capacity a lot. Of course, that doesn't mean we want to, you know, taking employment from the people. It's not like this. It's like instead of doing all this labor work and uh, playing with the quality, here we will have better quality and instead of the operators, we'll have engineers and, you know, the the mind who is working on doing automations and quality controls and all this stuff. Uh, so that's that's the main reason why we are we are doing this all this molding inductive components. Uh, for this particular designs and all this stuff, we have two patterns globally already applied and in a couple of countries already accepted. Uh, so this is the the two patterns. One is for the process. So you can see on the right side, this is the process uh, patent which. Inventor is uh, it's me. It's a, it's a solo in, in inventor, and in corp in you know in uh, in connection with the virtual electronics, we apply for these patents um, back in it was in 2019, and already expect accepted. You know, in a couple of countries in USA already it's uh, uh, granted. Uh, one is for the process. So there are 11 step process. Uh, how to do it? What are the material recipe? And what are the process involved? What are the the machines are involved in this stuff and second is for the design so let's say you have inductor on this on the circuit board or you have a, a power uh, transformer high frequency power transformer uh, or you have common mode choke for, for filtering purpose and all this stuff you can combine everything in a one package because now everything is molded right so we can combine all this stuff in a in a one package uh, and that was the particular idea you know for for this patent stuff um so that was, you know, what I did so far, like uh, in this professional stuff, uh, doing a bit of uh, R&Ds and innovation stuff. Uh, but let me let me talk about, you know, uh, when in 2015, when I decided to to jump to the professional world uh, and looking for a job in in, in uh, Germany, uh, I was accept I was accept you know expected or accepted um, at two, from two companies. One was with Electronic, and second was second one was Airbus. I think everyone know about Airbus. It's the, one of the uh, biggest manufacturer of commercial airplane uh, from France. And I was accept so I had two acceptance: one from Bruce Electronic as a product manager, and second thing was as uh, embedded engineer in Airbus. Um, if you talk about, I cannot give you exact, you know, the salary they were offering to me because of the, the rules and protocols I have to follow. Um, but the one thing which I can give you is like in Airbus, the salary was 40% more. Than Bluetooth Electronic, um, 
and I choose Butte Electronic instead of you know Airbus. Of course, the Butte is not that big as Airbus, but still I I, I choose. Of course, many guys will choose their uh, the the Butte Electronic. Uh, you know, if they have to face this similar situations. But I think they will be minority. So, uh, and I was the one of the the minor guy, you can say. Um, the reason was like why I choose Brute Electronics. It's uh, it's a title, or let's say the work I am supposed to do. You know, it's a, it's a managing stuff, and I'm the guy who can easily manage the stuff. And instead of working in a in a room or playing with just machines, you know, for a whole eight hour a day, um, which I have to do it in Airbus. You know, as I'm an engineer, I was not really convinced with that stuff. Uh, of course, maybe for some of you guys, it's it's okay to work with the stuff, or they 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 like it. So it's about the choice, like how you, what you have to do. It's not about always the salary. So especially when you start your career, it's never about the money. It's always about what you like and what you enjoy doing the most. Um, at that time, maybe you know you feel that you're, it's not the worth to, to. Uh, to leave, you know, to not look for the salary, but I'm sure at some point of the, the time, you know, after a couple of years, you will once you enjoy the stuff and you you learn some more stuff, definitely you will um, you will not regret your decisions which you have made in the past. So it's a, a, a signal for me. If I look back right now, I feel like I really did the the good decision at the time to to work in a with electronics with less money and working for a product manager. Instead of embedded engineer, uh, so sometimes uh, tough decisions is required for the tough choice, you know, um, and that's what I did uh, in the past. Um, and as I said, I was working in R and D uh, uh, department. Uh, let me explain you something about, you know, because there is a really misconception about what is the idea and what is innovation. Um, so idea could be anything, you know, that you can you can think about anything. What doesn't matter what you want to build or kind of stuff, but um, there is a really fine line between ideas and innovations, uh, which I can give you with examples. So for example, you could have idea to make a plan plated with the gold, which could cost the millions of dollar or billions of uh, rupees. You know, um, but that's just idea. I mean, at practicality, yeah, it looks nice, but who will buy it? So you know, when we when 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 you talk about innovations, it's always about um, it's an idea which will solve a particular problem. That's what got innovation. So, and innovation is always executable. So, you need to, you know, if you have a really good ideas uh, for a particular solution, but if you don't execute it, it's not innovations. So, for example, just look on the uh, right picture. There is a mobile phone, and then there is a gorilla glass. You know, so normally for I can I can imagine like nowadays almost like almost everyone use a gorilla glass on the mobile phone but when mobile phone like smartphone was invented there was no gorilla glass um and then always there is an issue with the cracking screen and then you have to change the screen which cost a couple of thousand rupees and all this stuff and now with gorilla glass it's a very simple product if you even look for the process and process of gorilla glass it's not very you know it's not very difficult uh, but the functions uh, it provides it's really solve a particular problem which was facing by big chunk of people and nowadays you can see the amount of cells the gorilla glass manufacturer they do it's it's really amazing um so for me it's not the the idea is just to to plate or with the gold plated the plane but the innovation is just very simple it need to be very simple but it need to be challenge particular um so particular problem it need to be have a solution for a particular problem and this is uh, it's anything you know it's it's it, it could be any small brass or it could be a big engineering machines but it need to solve the particular problem what customer is facing, what the user is facing, and that's what the innovation means. Um, while did this all, you know, this R and D stuff and pattern stuff and all this stuff, I have, uh, you know, I was did bit of, uh, let's say, uh, the study about how I can be innovative, you know, how I can solve these problems and all this stuff. And I, I have, I have defined one particular, let's say, strategy uh, or the steps. This is, you know, maybe you will when you when you look for some other presenter or you know uh, speaker, they may have the different version of this of innovation process. But this is my version, what I have follow, and maybe uh, it, it it's not like you know particular for particular for the particular product, but it's like it can be used by any industries, IT industry, civil engineering, or uh, you know computer engineering, electronics engineering, mechanical engineering. It's just like a process step, what you have to follow to be. To you know, to you know, invent or let's say to be innovative product in the market kind of stuff. Um, so everything start with the ideas. You know, the field of work like um, uh, uh, 
what kind of field, field you are working with. It could be mechanical engineering, electronic engineering, or yeah, computer engineering, doesn't matter. Um, you need to be very you know, specific. I cannot say I'm an electronic engineer. You know, I have to be specific, like power supply engineer, or you know, in a digital edu uh, engineering, so you know, working with semiconductor or something, or even in, in power electronics, you need to be like very specific. Like, so for, for, for me, I'm like magnetic, uh, component engineers, you can say. So I'm only dealing with magnetic components, inductor, common mode check, power transformer. It's very narrow field, um, but very specific. So I have very specific knowledge, very non, uh, very narrow knowledge, but very deep knowledge, and that's very important. You know, you cannot be like uh, looking the knowledge from everywhere and you working in every industry. It's not possible. You know, because everyone has only 24 hours. No one has 25 hours in a day. Uh, so you need to be very specific uh, in the field what you are working. Um, and then, you, for example, like when you when you when you look for let's say innovative stuff um, in any industries, yeah, you can be IT industries as I says. Um, normally, there is a three steps or let's say three predefined areas where you can do innovations. For for the field where I'm working, uh, magnetic field, we have we can do innovation in materials we can do in a design or in the process so again here when you want to do innovation stuff you need to be very specific what you want to do either you want to play with the, the materials play with the design of the component or the code or anything else you know the design of the house or something doesn't matter which will you are working with or the process you know how the manufacturing works and all the stuff um, and any industries it's always like these three parameters or these three stuff are always present you can think by yourself it's always present and then you need to be very specific uh, in which field you want to work with. So in, in, in my stage, it's like material stuff. So it's all, it's called soft ferrite materials, ferromagnetic materials. It's a mixture of different kinds of oxides. If I want to go into design innovations, then it's about uh, yeah, how I can do better designs uh, of the components, uh, which can really fit or with which really the customer is happy about. All the process, like how I can produce all these components in the mass productions or in laboratory scale production. Yeah. So it's always like you need to see in which particular field uh, you want to work with. Then the next step is extensive market research, and this is very critical portions. You want to uh, you know design anything else or any any components. First, you need to do market research. You need to understand. You need to talk to the customer. You need to talk to the your supplier. You need to talk to the the people you know who have experience and stuff, and ask them what is the problem they are facing. If you're in a professional world, ask your customer what what is the really problem they are facing. Even they are happy with the customer. There, you know, out of the ten customer, two customers will be ha they are happy to to open their you know the, the challenges they are facing with your components, with your design, with anything. You know, and uh, they will give you really good information. And that's very important. You can do market research. Uh, you know, by looking in a magazine, talking with the people. Uh, nowadays, Google is there, so you can go, go and you know search. And you need to spend a lots of a lots of hours doing market research and this is what i did i, I did almost like uh, eight month market research uh, talking to the customers from usa from asia and always i i, I figured out like the, the the customer in in usa they have different problems what they're facing and the customer in in china or let's say in india or asia they have different uh, challenge they are facing you know and then it's like yeah it it doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter you have to offer a solution at, at, at the time, you know, but it's like very important that you understand what actually the customer want. Uh, then based on this information, what you have collected after a couple of hours or, you know, or maybe uh, I would say at least you have to spend around, like, say, 400 to 500 hours just doing market research. It's very important point because uh, that's that's, let's say, the base of your uh, the building. Then based on that stuff, you have to do paper solution so paper solution is like you design something on a paper yeah um you say based on this this market research uh, i have this report and based on that uh, i can define some solutions yeah which can solve this problem from the customer point of view um so that's that's a kind of paper solution um uh, and for me when i did market research for the industries industries like electronic components uh, the challenges you know what i have what i have uh, came to know from customer point of view is like this is some of them so size and shape so you know you can see that the customer have like different the inductors are in different shapes uh, different size and yeah it could be big it could be small it could be lengthy round shape square shape triangle shape a lot of shape but then customer have particular choice you know because based on this let's say nowadays let's say if you if you ask apple or a tesla uh, 
uh, they, they both have a different uh, requirement, but the Apple laptop need to be slim and lightweight. Yeah. But when you, when you talk about um, the Tesla car, they really don't have the issue with the space, but they have the issue with the, the weight because the weight indirectly, you know, um, uh, work with you. It's, it's like a relation with the average and all the stuff. Um, so the size and safe limitations is there. Uh, inductance limitations, because inductance is one of the main magnetic parameters in particular components. So they want to have something in the a, in a same package, low inductance to high inductance with particular magnetic parameters. Uh, application voltage, so they also want to work with high voltage, low voltage, weight of the product. So they want to, like everyone nowadays in the industries, they want to have light product. Um, and as soon as you offer the heavy product, but very with very good parameters, they don't like it because it says like in Tesla, every gram matter. So even we have our, our components from Beauty Electronic, which I have designed. It's already in the, one of the Tesla model uh, in the car and it's directly on the motor control. Um, and when we, when I was working with these engineers from Tesla, it's uh, always they want to have like the main focus was always lightweight. You can give us like a big component, but it needs to be lightweight. It's very important for them. So that's one, you know, so uh, one of the challenges what I came to know from 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 the customer point of view. Then this EMI EMC limitations, which is something like you know every electronic component radiate certain amount of electrical and magnetic radiations, uh, and everyone have to follow the norms uh, from particular uh, countries. And uh, everyone like want to have something which doesn't radiate too much or doesn't affected by something from external radiations, you know. Uh, so that's something like EMI EMC limitations. I can give you uh, an example about the EMC. Like in an old time, you know, when you take your mobile phone near to television when it's on, uh, it start ziggling like uh, zzz, there was some noise in in the television, you know? and that's because of those two devices are, you know, communicated each with each other through some electric or interfering each other with electrical or magnetic radiations. And nowadays, you know, because of this advanced components and advanced technology, advanced design, nowadays that problem is already solved. Yeah, of course, in, in, a, in a poor design, if you're buying something from China, low price stuff, still you face this these issues. And this is because of this, all this EMC or EMIC radiations. Um, so there was all the challenge in my industries, what I was working, so um, yeah, you need to base on these informations. Uh, you can define the paper solutions, and then come to the next step, which is MVP. It's a minimum minimum viable product. So based on these solutions, you need to first make a samples or or something like demo. You know, which is which is not to be perfect. It's not necessary yet that that you can sell this this particular design or particular components or anything else. You know, it's but it need to be minimum uh, viable that you can see it. You can show to the people or you can taste it, you know, not all the functions, but a bit of function. So that's very important um, to have a minimal viable product. And at the time, uh, I, so for this whole R&D stuff, I took almost like four years and there was almost like uh, eight to nine months I just spent just to make the minimum product. And of course, at the time, maybe you don't have all the infrastructure that you need to build something, but then you always have to find a, a you know, sneaking way that how you can make something which is, um, viable or, you know, you can suit the people, you can test it. And this is what I did. I did lots of handmade samples, uh, in a laboratory, uh, with limited resources. But then every time when I, you know, when, when, when I talk with top management or let's say, uh, yeah, the CEOs in the, in the previous companies and all the stuff, when I saw something, they always motivate me to, okay, you, you can do it now. You can buy these machines. You can invest over here or there and all the stuff. But once you show it to the people, it's really easy to convince the people like how it works and all this stuff. Um, and then it's come to the market feedback. So then you have to show this particular product to, uh, let's say knowledgeable people in the field and then ask for the feedback. It's, it's very important because then based on this feedback, you can, or you can also uh, talk to your customer and then based on this stuff, you get the, the feedback, like what need to be improved? Are they really happy? Is this kind of product really solving the problem what they were facing or not? Um, and if not, then let's go back again to the paper solutions MVP. So it's a, it's a, it's a like uh, it's a closed loop, yeah. Until you end up really satisfied with the the product, um, you need to do market feedback always. And then once you're satisfied with the product, the, when the customer says, "Yeah, I will buy this product," yeah, from you guys, you are the unique design. So you you gain the trust from the customer, and then you go in execution phase where you can really invest on the machines and. All and you can you know make a real good samples or really good design. You can invest the money and all this stuff. Um, and here again, you can also because normally when we start a business, you also need to look for the investor. Normally, you know, 
if you want to really grow uh, a bigger investor is a very crucial part of the the, the stage of the business um, and then here during ejection phase you can you know you can convince the investor with your uh, mvp product or yeah you can you can because they, then they will be happy to invest in you because they can see um, uh, what customer is looking for if this product really solve this this issue what they are facing um, and yeah and then they will be ready to invest and then you can have machines and all this stuff during the execution phase once you have that one then you also need to look for the business model like uh, how you want to this is the phase right now or what i am you know business model what i am looking for right now investors uh, for example or you know uh, how i manage my production line what kind of uh, talent i required or uh, what kind of production capacity i can do it uh, you know all this business model so like uh, what i will do today what i will do tomorrow and what i will do after 5 years you know so which kind of product i will do in the future so that's what the, all this this uh, useful informations uh, this need to be in a business models and that's very important uh, then there is a product roadmap you need to know what you're going to do in a year what kind of product you're going to go with the first product and always the first product need to be uh, need to be very simple um, it need to be demanding in the market of course in every case it's not possible but you need to try something you need to do out of this five let's say product you need to choose one product which really you, uh, define your um, the roadmap like uh, with which product you have to start with and then step by step you can go in once you get the knowledge from while doing it step by step you need to decide okay after 2 years 5 years 7 years what i'm going to do which kind of product i going to design of course every time it's not possible that it's going to happen like what you have thought earlier uh, but at least you need to be prepared like what kind of product roadmap or how what will where you will see your company or your your process after Five years, yeah, it's it's very important. And then there's a growth cycle. So if you do all this stuff, and then, then there's a growth is very important in the company. Um, what I have what I have uh, heard is like um, the growth without profit is uh, fatal. So you need to have the profit, you know. So when you run a company or uh, when you turn your innovative product in, into the the money making business uh, the growth is very important the profit is very important so never compromise with the profit and all the stuff you know so it's not always like you do business with 2% profit margin or 10% profit margin depending on the product but you always have to be have profitable so always focus to run a profitable business because then with that money you can always you know ex you can do exponential growth um but this is like my version of this innovation process what i was doing and the the you know the product what i have did and all the stuff um and while doing all this stuff uh, always accept uh, the unexpected um so in in my case you know there was lots of failure while i was uh, making the samples it took me a lot of our lot of our uh, i can tell you one story there was like in a process there was some metal chunk like you can imagine like a stone um and we have to make in a powder form we didn't have that machines you know crushers and ball milling and all the stuff we didn't have that at the, at the time now we have but at the time we didn't have it and uh, i have to it was almost like 500 gram and i have to break this stone with the you know with the hammer and all the stuff it took me almost like 6 hour continuous work to break it it's very very hard material so but at the end we manage it uh, for testing purpose it was just for testing but and then uh, yeah, it was like continuous work, uh, but at the end, when I see the result, I was happy, you know, so the, all the pain and all this this effort was like useful at the time. Um, and just even to, to make the uh, the first product, it as I says, it took me almost like nine months or even to define the recipes or to look for the patent and all this stuff. It's, it's a long process. And in this process, you get failed many, many times. Yeah, as the Thomas Alvide, uh, Edison says, like to make the bulb, he fell almost like thousand times, but then at every thousand time he learned something. So failure or uh, unexpected is a part of the process. And if you want to be really reached to the end, you have to um, accept it. You know, so that's the kind of stuff. Um, that was the story. What uh, what I did and how I did. Uh, it's not finished yet. It's not the the finished story. It's in the process story, and it's I think it will never finished. Um, but it's like yeah. I'm, I'm in the process right now. Uh, the good thing is I'm enjoying what I'm doing right now, starting from university life to right now uh, being an entrepreneur. Um, so if you guys have any, you know, question, we can, we can, I can, I can, you know, I can answer these questions and all. I can 
I can give you some hint if I have it. Um, and if in case if you want to uh, join with me or talk to me about the anything about you know you know the product or how I did it or uh, something about technical stuff, you know, um, you can always write me on this email ID. What I can see, uh, you can see on the screen, arpankumar.patel at the red silby .com. And definitely I will, I will reply and, you know, we can talk, we can meet. Um, so in the, in this journey, if you want to join with me, definitely feel free to ask me or, you know, uh, to, to write the emails and we can talk about, yeah. So that was all about my story. Um, uh, it's about how I did the innovative stuff, innovative product. Uh, and now I think we can go in the question answer session. If anybody has questions, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, Hind. Students, uh, you may ask the questions okay. regarding the innovation okay, or regarding the story which is shared by the Arpan. Any type of question you may ask. If you're not able to speak, you may write in the chat window also. Anybody has any uh, doubt? or anything regarding the innovation because Erpan uh, is uh, doing a very good career in this area. Got a very good uh, research okay, and innovation. So I think students, those who want to do some activity or make their career in the field of innovation, they may interact with Erpan. He will try to give you the answer regarding your doubt. We have uh, uh, many participants okay, like Subham. Subham, you may ask anything. Subham, am I audible? Any other students? Sahil is also there. Kushi, Dhyan. Yeah, uh, uh, we have a variety of mass over here. There are a few students who are going to graduate in, in a few months and there are some who will be in pre-final means after a year or so. Mm -hmm. So if you can um, give and uh, there are some uh, who are beginning their career in engineering studies. So if you can give them message that what care and what type of uh, 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 things they have to look at during their study so that uh, they can be a very good uh, professional engineers and they can win the race because uh, the world is highly competitive. And uh, if you don't do anything, something different than all conventional things, then uh, people are there who can take you back and back and uh, you will be nowhere in the, in the market or field. So if you can uh, give some uh, good uh, hints or uh, trips or uh, guidance to them, that will be really beneficial to them. Yeah, uh, definitely, sir. You know, it's like um, uh, for the student like who are studying right now. Normally, you see like a theory world. You see lots of literatures and lots of you know the examples and lots of stuff like lots of study. You know, everything is is in the in the book right now. Um, but the real life is very different. You know, the the real life is very very different. Like, of course, you can apply this. You need to apply all these fundas. What you have learned. You have learned a lot and specifically like in our Indian education, specifically in, in Ganpath University, you know, uh, I'm, I'm sure you are in a safe head and like uh, you're learning a lot, but in real life, it's different. But normally, you, normally when you know right now, you cannot connect the things like what I'm learning, how I can apply this in, in, in this real world. But believe me, everything is useful. What you're learning right now, everything is useful. Uh, and I would suggest like when you are learning something don't just uh, you know really focus in everything on the book but while you are studying uh, talk to the expert talk to the industrial guy or uh, try to read some magazines you know uh, try to look what happening in the market 
it doesn't matter you know it doesn't matter which in, which field you are even if you are in from electronic engineering field or it field and still if you want to you know to it's it's very it's useful to to come to know also to get the knowledge something from mechanical background you know let's say uh, the injection molding process or accelerator molding process or compression molding process of course at some point i mean you you feel it's it doesn't it's not really helpful but at some point you never know at which part of the the career stage it will be useful for you um and of course uh, you know the projects is very important part of the life uh, uh, because no one cares you know what you have studied it's very important that what you have built you know? so while studying try to do some small uh, project uh, and don't look for the money for, for this stuff you know it's like uh, don't be rushed to to earn the money from initial phase um i can tell you uh, one of my story so um which i haven't uh, I talk about so once i finished my study i was rejected from two companies from locally so i started looking for my job and i was rejected for a, a salary of 8000 rupees so i remember from the both company i was rejected but at that time it was me you know of, of course the company rejected me saying yeah because i was not able to present my knowledge effectively but that didn't demotivate me so um but if i see right now it it was me who rejected them because i was not really happy to to give my all the knowledge for 8000 rupees of course at that time 8000 rupees was a lot for me but you know from when you start looking for the job don't really hunt for the money it's always about the interest um what you enjoy and once you're in the field if you don't enjoy you have chance to to change the field and all this stuff uh so yeah while studying i would say try to look bit of practical world what's happening around the world in a real life um and don't chase the money it's it's very important if you want to be do something specific or you know enjoy what you're doing that's very important and as i say it's like you know for any any project innovative project or anything you know very special project it doesn't matter which field it field civil field or any field uh, you can contact me you know if i have something to say i'm definitely sure you know i have something to say with you guys like uh, that you can also use in your field um, and as i say you can write me email and then we will in contact yeah yes any other student want to ask question we have a arpan and he is already shared to you his story okay? and if you want to make your own future like arpan so you can ask anything Okay, so I think uh, uh, there is no more question from the student side. So for uh, uh, our sweet memory, we can just take a few screenshot. So I request to all the students just turn on their video so that uh, for this sweet memory we, we can take the few of this photograph. So just uh, on your video for the one or two minutes so that we can take the photograph for this. all of you please turn on your cameras students just uh, turn on your camera for one or two minutes and just uh, hold it Student, just turn on your camera. I request yes, all of you. Good to see so many faces, and uh, very soon, uh, yeah, Arpan. Actually, very soon we are going to open, so uh, they will be there in, uh, in college. College also. Yeah, they are also missing, so. <laughs> Thank you.
बाकी लोग कैमरा ऑन करो भाई बराबर फोटो ले सके महर शार्दिक अभय यशपाल ध्यान uh so i think we have uh, taken many uh, of the screenshot now uh, i am very much uh, thankful to the arpan he is uh, sparing uh, his valuable time for us okay and giving a very good insight for this uh, my story okay for the innovation so i just thankful to arpan and uh, students just be present we will start our second session Okay, at eleven o'clock in the same link. So do not uh, left from this meeting. Okay, we will start very soon the next session after ten to fifteen minutes. Okay, and uh, you see, sir, anything is still missing or no, sir? That's fine. So I would say, you know, thank you very much for the uh, the students, the professor, um, Ganpati University, uh, for. you know to build to help to build my career uh, at initial phase um and thank you very much everyone jai hind okay bye bye okay students do not left the meeting okay just uh, after 10 minutes we will start the next session